I'd like you to meet my mother, Marge Boyer. Thank goodness she's out here at the Hollywood Arts Festival helping me out because I'd be nuts without her. And she's a great help. I'm and she's awesome. And I love her to death. Can't see the mountains, feel the wind <laughs> is moving slow. The stage before a breeze begins, it's time for rain. Yep. Time to feed the plants and trees, the sky will cry. Her tears will bring life to the sea. Florida, my family. Oh, yeah, way, way back. Like yeah. I drove out to the Hollywood Arts Festival today to visit with former professional surfer Lynn Boyer, who is now currently a professional artist. In 2003, Lynn's art was chosen to represent the poster for the Hollywood Arts Festival which gave her a big boost into the art world. Lynn was the professional world surfing champion for women in 1978 and 79, and she'd love to make just as big an impact with her paintings. My name's Al Antaki. Yeah. Al Antaki. Yeah. Where are you from? Virginia Beach, Virginia. And apparently you're an art collector. You're here at Lynn Boyer's oh. art I wouldn't, booth. I wouldn't call it an art collector. Uh, we've gotten to know Lynn over the years we've been here and have several of her pieces, both oil and G-clay. Do you notice that she does all landscapes? No, she has a pretty wide variety, I think, of things. And I know that she goes to Europe in the fall and, and does a completely different sort of thing. She's got it all on her website. Oh, thank you very much, Jack. Okay. okay, thank you. That's it. And she's also a really nice person. She's a really nice person, I know that. Um, what, what do you call your art style? I guess I'd call it, um, it's a cross between realism and impressionism. <laughs> and I'm leaning more towards the impressionistic side of it because I really love the freeness of the brush strokes and the capturing the light and color. And to me, it just feels right. So we did notice that your earlier works were really realistic. Right. And you are becoming more impressionistic as time goes on. Yes. Yes. Any inspiration, any impressionists that model after, or it's all your own? Well, there's, you know, there's some plein air painters that I'm really, I, I really love going outside and to paint on site. So I, I like this painter that's uh, from the mainland, Randall Sexton. His work is amazing. And a, another guy from Maui, um, Ronaldo Macedo. He's really come up in the plein air painting style, and, you know, there's a whole list of them. When did you decide that you were a professional artist? I don't really decide that. I think once you start making a living at it, what year? I would How say, old you, let's say? Uh, I don't even know. That's a good question. Probably like six years ago or maybe eight years ago okay. when I became full time at it. Do you choose the subjects you're going to paint or do you see something and it chooses it for you? It kind of chooses it for you. When you become an outdoor painter, everywhere you go, you see paintings <laughs> to be created. And when you, certain times you'll think of going, you know, to a certain spot to paint, and then something entirely else catches your eye. For me, when I'm driving out to the North Shore to paint something, I don't always say I'm going to paint at this certain place. I'll just go and scope out the views. And so, you, as an artist, you see yourself as a painter, or have you tried, let's say, sculpture or anything, any other? Type of art. No, a painter. painter. I haven't tried sculpture. Tell me something about the business of art. That's, it's, you know, it's like, in a way it's similar to surfing because it is competitive. There's so many artists and to succeed as an artist you really have to be out there a lot and, you know, and market yourself and just show up, so you know. saying it's more than just the painting. Oh, it's way more. Yeah. Painting's the, the fun part, you know, the... Sometimes it's the hard part too though, because when you're learning and growing, you, you struggle with it just like anything, like surfing. Sometimes you fall off, fall off, try it off the lip, fall off, you got to get back on. And Same with the brush, the brush strokes, you know, you don't put it down right, you have to start over, start a new one. You know, it's, I'd say one out of every maybe 10 to 20 paintings is a, a good one. You know, small paintings, you practice with studies and, you know, you get a good one, one out of every 10 is pretty good. So All the rest are practice. <laughs> what led you to cleaning houses? 
after surfing, I went that route to support myself. Thanks, you guys. Aloha. <laughs> After the professional surfing thing stopped for me, I didn't have anything to do to make a living because back then we didn't even make a good living surfing. So that's all I could basically do besides art. And back then I still needed a lot of training as an artist because I was kind of just starting after college. I went on the pro circuit and I didn't really do art. So I had to develop my art. So that house cleaning enabled me to be able to paint as well and practice and take classes and you know, so I would do some of each. So did it give you quite a boost to have the, this Hollywood Arts Festival? Yeah. Pick your poster, pick your... Oh yeah, that was that was wonderful winning that. I mean, it's always good to win an award like that. And you, it really, for business, it gives you a lot of attention and people become aware of you as an artist and instead of a surfer, you know. <laughs> so that was wonderful to win that. So getting to surfing, you were a short border or a long border or about... Long border, short border. <laughs> short border. But when you started surfing, the short boards were already out? Yeah, that was at, right when it changed and it was all short boards by then. How old were you then? I was like, I started surfing in 69, but you know, that was like, what, 11? And that's when it was changing. So by the time I started competing surfing, which was a couple years later, it already had switched over to short boards. And there weren't even any long boards back then because, you know, the long boards made a comeback later. Where did they hold the state surfing contest back? At the Alamoana Bowls. Oh, at Bowls? Yeah, at some point, you did consider yourself a professional surfer. Yeah, I was a professional surfer. So I won the, the championship in 78 and 79. And the whole pro thing started in 76 with the Smirnoff World Cup, or I don't know if it was the World Cup, but it was a competition that was, there was money if you'd win. So the, you know, that's the first time, mostly they were all amateur meets before that. And then that's when the world tour was started back in the, the IPS, International Professional Surfers. Fred Hemmings started that and it it's grown to what it's become today with the ASP, the Association of Professional Surfers. Were you ever involved in surfboard design for your own surfboards? Well, I used to shape words before I became a... Uh, actually, I got my first surfboard shaper, Harold Iggy, which he was one of the best shapers back in the 70s. So I got him to sponsor me, and that I shaped about 10 boards from scratch before then. But it, when I got him to shape my boards, I gave up shaping, because back then there was no market for women shapers. I was only one of the women... You know, I was one of the only women surfers... That out there. Who, who were the other professional surfers with you? Oh, there's a lot, a list of them. I mean, you want me to name them all? Rel Sun, Marco Ober, Jericho Poplar, Linda DeVoli, Shannon Aikman. I talk to her sometimes. Mar you know, I'm not really in too, too much contact. Brenda Scott. But every now and then we say hi, you know. Well, you certainly had a couple of fun honors with the uh, Huntington. Yeah, the the... Surfers Walk of Fame. Surfers Walk of Fame. And then the Hawaii Sports Hall of Fame. Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. Were you ever sponsored by anybody? Yeah, but I don't really surf that much anymore, so. But just as it's a, My main thing is art, and I want to, I'd love to be sponsored to do my art. <laughs> to me, a winning an award with art is what, you know, that, that helps promote my business. And, oh. Oh. This concludes our interview with Lynn Boyer. In closing, you will hear her talking about her first adventure on a stand-up paddle surfboard. It was all choppy. I couldn't even... Uh, I mean, your first... It's hard. You have to, like, learn before you get on Where's chops. The party was fun, though. No, the party was awesome. And I had fun. I was in the water for two hours trying it. I'm stubborn. I want to get it. And I yeah. got on Sarah's little board, and that thing, I couldn't even stand on it. On, on Cosette's, Cosette's big board, I yeah. could stand. Yeah. But the little one that rips the waves, I, there's no way. Yeah. It's a, there's a learning curve for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I think if I could get to the point where I could get on the small boards, I'd have a good time. Oh, yeah, I think you would too. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I like surfing too. I mean, well, nothing I beats the paddling out. No. Oh, thanks. Wow, oh, this is a busy festival.